If you work with DBT long enough, eventually you're going to run into this idea of intermediate models. And if you're like me, then it's probably taking you a long time to figure out what exactly that means and what their purpose is. So what I want to do in this video is help clear that up. So we'll talk about number one, what are intermediate models and what's their use case? I'll show you an example of how you could implement it in a project and just some general thoughts on that. And number three, I'll talk about things you might want to avoid or look out for as you start to implement these intermediate models into your project. And now lastly, before we start, if you are looking to learn more about DBT, if you're new to it, or there are some concepts that you're trying to clear up, I do have some more free resources. I have what's called the starter guide for DBT. It's both a PDF and a bunch of other information just consolidated together to help you get started with DBT. And it's really things that I wish somebody would have kind of told me when I got started to hopefully make it easier for you as you start working with it. So I'll leave a link in the description and in the comments for you to check that out if that's something you're interested in. Now let's start talking more about intermediate models. In most of my videos, I'll typically start by reviewing the documentation, but in this example, I think it's gonna be easier to talk in the form of visuals. Typically what's gonna happen here is you'll have your sources all the way to the left. So these are your raw data tables that's in your database already. And on top of them, you'll have one-to-one -one staging models built in DBT. And if that's something new to you, I do have other videos talking about this concept, but essentially these are views that clean up one-to-one -one with your sources. Now let's skip over intermediate for a second, but what you ultimately end up creating are some sort of mart. And this could be following some sort of data modeling approach or one big table, whatever. But in this case, let's just say we have generic entity focused mart. So we have a customer's table, we have an orders table, employees, and these are joining together all the underlying staging models to give you that mark. But sometimes it gets too much and you want to offload some of that complexity. And that is the whole goal of intermediate models. They are supporting models for your marts. And one thing to point out here that's different than let's say a staging model or maybe even a macro is that the intention here is it's just to support one downstream model. So in this case, this is really just to support this mart. You won't have this joined into other marts. It's just supporting this. It's the idea is to offload the complexity but rather than keeping it in one query into something else. So at a high level, that's where the intermediate layer and your intermediate models will exist for your data pipeline. So let's take a look now at the documentation here. We can see a little bit more about how you could break it down within your project. So you could add a separate intermediate layer within models and have that broken down even further by business groupings to help group what you want there. Alternatively, you could have it focused on just the end mark. There is a recommended naming convention. Again, everything in DBT is focused on clarity here. So we want to make this as clear as possible so that you spend less time trying to figure out what this is and more time actually working and adding productive logic and other things in your project. So typically you would prefix it with INT underscore. You could focus on the entities involved. So maybe it's customers or locations or things like that. And then what's happening. For example, pivoted, joined, funnel created. Naming conventions, of course, are up to you and your internal company conventions, but this is a good starting point if you're unsure about exactly how you want to do that. Before we jump into our example, here's a few more comments about what this is. And number one, these are typically going to be materialized ephemerally, meaning as the ephemeral materialization. Again, there's another video on that if you want to check that out. And what that means is when you compile or when you run it, it will be created as a CTE under the hood uh, when you do ref them, which can make it a little bit complicated to debug and, and troubleshoot, but it's not going to get deployed. Again, really just a way to outsource or offload your logic into a, a different, basically file that you can manage separately. Alternatively, you could materialize them as a view, but just put them in a custom schema. The whole goal here is you don't want them to be exposed to end users. This is just something internal to help clean up your project and, and make it easier to work with. Now, a few other comments on the purpose of intermediate models. Number one, Structural simplification. Regraining is another common use case. So if you need to do certain joins and bring together different logic so that it can work with your end mart, this is a good use case to maybe offload it into an intermediate model so that logic doesn't get confused with everything else going on. And all of that together, I think, just goes to isolating complex operations. The more and more complex your query gets, you it gets a little bit harder to interpret what's going on. But putting it into an intermediate layer and an intermediate model can help you isolate the operations, but ultimately under the hood, the query still compiles the same. So this is a lot of words and a lot of documentation. Let me show you an example in a project of what this could look like. All right, so here I am in a project and here, this is a customer's mart. So let's imagine it's that customer's mart right here and we're trying to join stuff together. So here there's actually two intermediate models feeding into it. And I have an intermediate models directory right here. But for example, let's just focus on this one. I'm calling this CTE 
customers and locations joined. And here's the name of the underlying model, int customers and locations joined. So that follows that similar convention of the entities and then a verb. Let me open this up. But truthfully, this is probably unnecessary to break out into an intermediate model, but I just want to use it as an example. Here we can see we are joining these together with the customers to get all this together and, and really just offloading these joins. The same goes for uh, this one here. I'm regraining, I'm summing things up to the customer level and bringing it back in here and joining it so that it's easy. And again, this is not really complex enough that you would normally break this out. It's more for an example, but here you can see now there's less logic here, there's less to be concerned with, and you can just focus on the end result of this customer's model. And in terms of materialization, if we go into the DBT project, I have intermediate model materialized ephemerally. And what that means again is this will compile as a CTE anytime it's reft. So under the hood here, take all of this information and drop it in here as if you really did write it out. But because of the way DBT works, it allows you to keep these concepts separate in different files, but still pull them together. So hopefully that's making sense. But just remember what we're doing here is just providing support to this customer's mart so that at the end of the day, this is a little bit easier to read and easier to work with. And we call those intermediate models. Now, lastly, before we finish this up, I do want to mention a few things to look out for to make sure you don't use this in the wrong way. And number one is don't over optimize too early. I mentioned in here that we probably don't even need to do this for these examples because it's really not that complicated or that confusing. It was more for example purposes, but in your real project, make sure that you're not over optimizing too early and trying to do these different things when it's not necessary. The whole goal here is to make it easy to work with and avoid having to hop around too much to get to the root of what's going on. So if you feel like things are going well, you're not having any issues uh, debugging or anything like that as is, then don't worry about it. But this is an option and something to consider if you do want to use it. Number two here is exposing to end users. I touched on that before, but the idea here is this is meant to be an internal feature for your project to make it easier to work with and break things apart. You don't want to over clutter your warehouse by exposing these things. These are going to be ephemeral models, AKA CTEs and not tables. And lastly is this point here of narrow the DAG, widen the tables. Think of your DAG, which is essentially your workflow as an almost like an arrow. You're going from wider to skinnier. And the idea here is you want to have multiple inputs, but not outputs once you get to this level. So if you go back to this here, I mentioned this before, the goal here is not for this to be reused in multiple cases. This is not what you would consider an arrow. You can see this is going wide into something that's now sprawling out again. But if you keep it like this, it's going wide to narrow. And that's really what you want to focus on. And it's, this becomes especially important when you start dealing with intermediate models because of the urge to want to reuse it in multiple places. It's not like a staging model or a macro that can be reused multiple places. So, so keep that in mind as you start using your intermediate models, you don't want to get lazy and start reusing these in different places and get away from the purpose. It's just going to make your life more difficult. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of what intermediate models are all about and how to use them in your own project. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.